Hello everyone and welcome! The Nintendo Wii, released in 2006, is a console we all know and love. Most of us just had the console for the included game Wii Sport and had fun with families and friends for hours. The first version was even backward compatible with the previous Nintendo console, the Nintendo GameCube. Although underpowered compared to its competitor at the time, such as the PS3 and the Xbox 360, the Wii was the most successful console of its generation. What you see on screen is the retail version of the console. But have you ever wondered what will a development Wii look like? Will it be like a regular Wii with some USB ports for debugging? Will developers test their codes by burning disks every time? Or will they use maybe some kind of in-house emulator? Well, let's answer those questions. Yes, this big black box is the tool that developers use to test their games while being in development. This is the Nintendo RVT-001 NDEV Development Kit, the official Nintendo Wii development kit that was given to developers back in the day. Quite the difference in design, isn't it? Let's check it out. On the front, we can see two GameCube memory card slots, an SD card slot, four GameCube controller ports, a seven-segment display, three LEDs marked as disc, fan and slot, a power LED, a power button, a reset button, a sync button, a set of 8 dip switches, a reserved button, and an eject button. On the back of the unit, there is an equally big amount of I.O. Some of them are identical to the retail Wii such as the sensor bar plug, the AV multi-out plug, and the two USB Type-A ports. But we can see some extra plugs, three USB Type-B plugs labeled USB DI, USB COM, and USB Debug. There is also a serial port, Bluetooth mode switch, and down there, there is the power switch. And on the side, there is just a plug for wired Bluetooth controller and the power supply. Now, it's all cool and fun to look at this unit, but a bit of action wouldn't hurt. So let's install it. In order to install it, you must have three USB Type-B to USB Type-A cable. Those are easy to find, they're used on printers. A serial cable. This cable is also easy to find on eBay for cheap. Now, of course, you need to connect it to a computer. The official documentation insists on plugging the USB cables directly. With a desktop, you should be fine. The computer should run Windows XP Service Pack 2 minimum, but Windows 7 32 bits is fine too. Now, all you have to do is plug the cable between the unit and the computer. The computer will detect the hardware. But, of course, Windows does not have any drivers for that built-in. You need to find the drivers. I can't link anything for legal reasons, but they are easy to find along with the rest. Once you have the drivers, it's just a matter of installing them like any device and it's installed. Now we can test the unit. And here's the dev menu. Now to be able to develop for the Wii, we need to be able to compile code made for it. For that, we will use the big software that came with it. Again, it can be found easily. But before that, there is a Windows setting that you must change in order for the software to run. The date. The software we're going to use is licensed, and the license expired a long time ago. But by changing the date, you can make it work perfectly. The year should be around 2000, and the day should be a same day at the same date. You can do it however you want, but I prefer having the same day so the change is just a year. Now we are going to install Code Warrior, Sigwin, and the Revolution SDK. The SDK, or Software Development Kit, is easy to install. Just copy the folder RVL SDK on the root of your C drive. Now you can install the ND installer which will install the ODEM software. Just follow the prompt and we're good to go. Now we're going to install Sigwin. And this will be tricky because you will need a very special version of Sigwin. And you will need internet access to your Windows XP computer. Sigwin dropped support for Windows XP long ago. And the first time I had to install the NDEV, I struggled a lot to find a way to make it work. But I finally did, and I will link the Sigwin custom repo in the description. All you have to do is to download both exe and runme.bat and follow the prompt. Then you will need the 3.8 version of the tool Make. It's easy to find and most of the time it's included in the package you can find. Copy the exe to C, Sigwin, Bin and it's done. Once you have Sigwin and Make 3.80 installed, you can install Code Warrior for Wii. 
you can unzip the folder wherever you want. Now we need to set some variables. Right click on computer, select properties and then go to advanced settings. And here you can find environment variables. Here you will have three system variables. Revolution SDK root. Set it to the path of the RVL SDK folder. CW folder. Set it to the path of the code warrior folder you just unzipped. Segwin path. Set it to the path of the Segwin installation. And now we're good to go. The end dev and all the software are installed properly and we can use it. Well, now you've seen it all. This is a marvelous piece of hardware. I'm so happy that I can share this with you. I hope you liked this video. I'm not used to this, but I liked it. I hope you have a fantastic day and see you next time.